The economy is fundamentally tied to growth. Existing natural resources are exploited and through various processes are turned into products, then later discarded as waste. A circular economy is one in which waste or surplus materials and energy are recycled back into products and services. This begins with design. Research by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation found that 80% of a product's total emissions are determined at the design phase. An ideal product design will maximize longevity and durability as well as efficient recyclability while incorporating renewable energy sources materials for both manufacturing, transportation and operating. Unfortunately, the most environmentally friendly products are often less profitable, at least in the short term. For instance, planned obsolescence is when companies deliberately create products that will wear out or otherwise become obsolete sooner than necessary for a given cost. This decreased product lifespan encourages customers to buy more often and therefore drives up revenue. To a large extent, it's up to the consumers to incentivize ethical practices from businesses by only purchasing products and services from companies that are doing their due diligence. Lawmakers can also do their part. France outlawed planned obsolescence back in 2015 to stop manufacturers deliberately introducing design flaws or other obstacles for repair into their product designs. Many people assume that efficiency is key to circularizing the economy, but this can in fact be counterproductive. As described by Javon's paradox, when a new process allows for a specific resource to be used more efficiently, this greater efficiency will increase the usage of that resource. A clear example of this is human population growth over time as a result of technological advances related to food production. Per area of land, Factory farming is far more efficient than hunter-gathering or organic farming at yielding food and is therefore able to support a larger population density but at the cost of being far more resource intensive and polluting to the environment. Similarly, as cars have become more fuel efficient, consumers have been incentivized to drive more often and further than before, increasing their consumption of fossil fuels and subsequent emissions of carbon and toxic pollutants. Circularizing the economy requires a multifaceted approach and digital tools are available to help. The Vehicle Total Cost of Ownership tool from the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Authority, EECA, can help you choose a vehicle with lower emissions across its lifetime. The Circular Economy Directory helps businesses that produce specific waste find other businesses that can use their waste to make new products so that both companies can cooperate to reduce their environmental footprint. For more tools, check out the learning summary for this video. Digitizing itself can help to reduce both clutter as well as waste while increasing functionality for your business. Travel is a major consideration for reducing both carbon emissions as well as toxic air and runoff pollutants. Incentivizing staff to carpool, train, or e-bike to work can help or better yet encouraging them to walk, jog or cycle. Always good to get the blood flowing and lungs pumping.